Today I am doing five point perspective. I found this on Google and printed it off. And these are the five points that we'll be using. So one on each side, one on the top and bottom, and there's one in the middle. I find it easiest to start by making the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a road that's kind of coming up towards the center. And notice that I'm doing it on one of the diagonal lines radiating out from the center point. If you want to, you can even have your road turn so it looks like it's the corner of the city. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually do that on both sides down here on the bottom and have my road kind of turn so that it's an actual intersection that's kind of leading us in. And I think I'm gonna have another intersection up here so instead of um, continuing my lines, I'm gonna have kind of a, just a little line up here where my city's gonna stop. And that's kind of a good place to stop for now. Now I'm gonna start closest to the bottom and I'm going to do the corner of a building right down here. And notice that any vertical line that I do needs to follow one of these um, curved lines that goes from the top point to the bottom point. And then any horizontal line that I do needs to go to one of the side vanishing points. So that's kind of the face of my first building. And then the side of my building always needs to radiate back towards that center point. So kind of lots to think about which, which direction do these points or do these lines need to go, vertical lines angle towards the top or the bottom points, horizontal lines to the side points, and then anything going towards back towards the middle um, needs to go towards the middle vanishing point. So, you know, it's kind of something that you have to think about as you are working to draw these buildings. Think about, are you making a vertical line? Are you making a horizontal line? or are you making a line that goes towards that center vanishing point? And I'm just gonna start by you know, making these closer up buildings, the ones that are closest to me, because the other ones would be layered behind them. So it's kind of easier to start at the front and work my way back. And I'm gonna go ahead and think about where each line needs to be. If there isn't a line there, like right here, I'm just going in between two lines, um, but you can kind of eyeball that. And actually, I mean, the only straight lines in this entire piece are the ones that go back towards that center vanishing point. All of the rest would be curved lines. So it's kind of hard to use a ruler on this unless you are using a ruler going back to that center line. But because we have so many guidelines, I'm finding it pretty easy just to kind of follow those guidelines. And um, that really helps make my drawing accurate. All right, I'm just thinking about what kind of shapes I want. I'm not trying to get too fancy at this point, but making basically a lot of rectangles and then um, making sure that they go back towards that center vanishing point as I make them. So I've got three buildings and I'm gonna go ahead and continue adding a couple more. Uh, this one's gonna come off the road here and then come back towards my other one because they share the side kind of together here. And then I need to make the top if it's below that halfway point, we should see the top of the building, the roof of the building. If it's above that, then we won't see the roof of the building. So that's something to kind of keep in mind too. Um, I wanna go ahead and put this building in here right in the middle. So the road kind of is gonna run into a building basically. So I want it to be kind of tall, maybe up to here. And I wanna go ahead and decide maybe what that building is gonna look like. Maybe I'll add one more in here first because it would be in front of that building. And I have to kind of think about what this one will look like here. Maybe have something going along there. Another one right in here that's a little shorter. And then 
I'm gonna go ahead and draw this little corner right over here. So you can see now I've got like a little block, a city block. And then this is where the street is right here. And I wanna go ahead and add this building in the center. So I think I'm just gonna draw this bottom section of this building. Maybe it'll be have like some doorways or something along the bottom. And then it'll be a little bit thinner as it goes up. I'll draw kind of a, a building that has a couple different shapes on it. And really this is probably the easiest building to draw because it's just flat on or straight on. So you don't have to worry about too many angles. So I can get a little fancier with the design on this building uh, since I don't have a lot of angles to deal with or worry about. And it should kind of come into this other building here. I'm gonna make sure that maybe I've got another really tall one right next to it. That's coming down right here. And maybe I'll have one on this side over here too. So I'm basically just trying to kind of take my time to think about where else I want to add buildings. So, you know, if they're farther back, maybe they're a little bit higher up. If they're closer, maybe they don't quite go as high because we're looking at it kind of from a distance right now. So I'm just trying to kind of figure out where these buildings would go. I'm doing it with pencil for now so that if I do need to erase, I can. But at this point, I'm just layering more buildings and more buildings up on top of each other, basically, so that I can have kind of a believable cityscape. Let's see, I'll use these guidelines up here to add a couple elements to my buildings. And you just kind of have to think, okay, how wide is this building going to be? How tall um, does it have, you know, parts that should be going back towards the center of the circle here? Then make sure to draw those using those diagonal lines going back towards the center vanishing point. And I still need maybe a, a closer one over here, so I'm gonna make one that's kind of on the front on this first block here, and we'll continue to add buildings to my project. All right, you can see I finished drawing buildings and I'm go I went ahead and traced them with Sharpie, and now I'm going to add details. So the windows and the doors, uh, kind of follow the same rules that I had for my buildings. So um, if you're doing vertical lines, make sure that they follow those curved lines that go to the top and bottom vanishing points. If you've got horizontal lines, make sure that they go to those side vanishing points. And then if you're working on the side of a building, that's kind of angled back towards that center vanishing point, then make sure you follow those diagonal lines. So as I work here, I'm just going to use my pen so you can see it a little bit better. And I just want to add various details to these buildings. So I'm putting in some doors or some doorways. I'm adding some lines, you know, those buildings that are covered with glass mirrors or windows, you know, have just a bunch of lines on them. So I can just make a bunch of vertical lines or horizontal lines, as long as they follow those curves of my circle here. And I'm just trying to add variety in my building design. So you can add, you know, fun little shapes and stuff on the top of your buildings if you want, little wires and things, um, just whatever you want to kind of fill in the space of these buildings and add those little details. Some of my windows that are farther away are just little lines with my pen and that kind of keeps it simple, which is nice. Um, but maybe if they're closer, I'll give them a little bit more detail. At this point, I'm happy with my drawing and I don't want to be able to see all these guidelines. So because I 
printed this off, um, I need to trace it. And I can either just trace it on the back, you can obviously see my lines on the back, or I can find a window or a light box or light table and trace it onto a new sheet of paper. Because I used marker, you can pretty much see through, especially if you have a window or a light box behind it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, I have traced my drawing onto a new piece of paper. So you can see I don't have any guidelines. And now I wanna go ahead and add some color. I'm using Arteza colored pencils. It's a really nice set. I think there's like, I don't even know, 40 colors or something. So I have plenty to choose from. And my goal in adding color to my cityscape here is to show my knowledge of blending colors and also maybe using complementary colors here and there to really make the colors vibrate and stand out. So I wanted to start off with my sky since it's kind of the farthest back and I want to blend some colors. So I'm just starting with yellow and I'm blending it into a darker yellow and then I hope to go darker yet to kind of continue to blend. And the best way to blend with colored pencils I've found is just to basically overlap your colors a little bit. So I'll take my color a little bit farther than what I actually want it to go. And then that way, when I start the next color, I can kind of color over my previous color a little bit and try to get them to mix and blend. So that's kind of a good exercise that I can practice. You can see as I'm adding this orange, I'm overlapping the yellow a little bit so that the two can kind of blend together. And I could even go back with my yellow again and overlap the orange again if my blend is not a smooth blend. So um, you can kind of experiment with the pressure that you do, pushing down lightly or pushing down hard so that you get really a nice vibrant color. But this is a great way to kind of experiment with that blending technique. And I plan on using this blending technique as I color the sky, the road, and all of the buildings as well. So I'm just going to continue um, working on my sky. Next, I'm going to try to get a pink blend. Um, remember too, when blending colors, it usually helps to blend colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So pink would be basically kind of like red and that would blend nicely um, with the orange because red and orange are together. Here I'm working with blue and purple, which are also close to each other on the color wheel. So they blend nicely together as well. So kind of thinking about that as you work so that you're not blending colors together that don't really make sense. And you can always you know, try to, to do white on top to help blend as well. Now, as I'm working on these buildings, you can obviously see that I've sped it up very quickly, um, but I'm trying to consider the light source. So right now, the light is coming from the back, right? The sun is behind the buildings. So I'm hoping to make the front of my buildings a little bit darker and then the sides a little bit lighter. And voila, there are my buildings. Um, I fast forwarded just a little bit. Now I'm working on windows, and for the windows I wanted to go with the complementary colors. So if you're looking at a color wheel, these are the colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. For example, I used yellow in my purple buildings, or purple on my yellow buildings. And blue and orange are complementary, and green and red are complementary. So I did really kind of this light green with pink instead. But yes, I thought that would be kind of more impactful to use these complementary colors. And then you can also see that I've added a little bit of blending like in the windows and on the buildings as well, just to show that. So I hope you enjoyed watching me tackle this five point perspective drawing. This is actually the first time I have done five point perspective and I had a lot of fun trying this out. I'm excited to try other scenes as well. Now that I have finished my drawing and coloring, I'm gonna go ahead and sign my name. I usually do an L for Lori and then Elke, E-H-L-K-E. So thanks so much for watching and let me know how this goes. I hope you have a good time working with Five Point Perspective.